Good morning. We're back for another schoolgirl sampler. A couple blocks. This week is uh, 53 and 54. And it's the Spool and King's Crown. Now, what's interesting about this month is that uh, we're going to talk about color a little bit and value and contrast because the blocks in themselves are pretty simple. Uh, the one block, the king's crown, is actually the potato chip block with a little bit of a twist. So if you know how to make a potato chip block, you're home free on that. The spool one is just very simple sewing. You got some half square triangles, but we've all done those before. And uh, so here are the blocks. If Peter can swing around and show the blocks. Uh, <clears throat> these are the Kim Deal ones. And I actually used four different fabrics, just like the pattern called for, but come down here to Cappy, cheater, 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 cheater. She had this fun fabric that already looked like thread. Isn't that fun? So she decided to just use the whole piece instead of piecing, string piecing the uh, center with different colors. She just used, so she had the perfect fabric for it. So it looks like a spool of thread. It's so fun. And then here with hers, we're going to talk about this block a little bit. Uh, hers looks really good. Hers looks really, really good, but not like the, the book. The book was interesting because it was very low contrast. Now me, I'm a high contrast person. I like to see a lot of contrast. So that means uh, how dark and how light the fabrics are together uh, versus one another. Now here, I would say uh, Cappy captured low contrast right here but still maintained her design, and that was really good. But then this focus fabric, she kind of had a focus fabric. Where this, this block, it's really not about any of the focus fabrics. This is the pattern you want to see. You actually want to see this square inside a square. And this should be the fabric that's point, that comes out, sticks out. So in Cappy's, it's these flamingos only because they have character, uh, they have an interest that you your eye goes to. So in this one, the lower the contrast, that was, I think, what the lesson was about. Because if you look at the book, see how this kind of all smooshes together. When you get that in a quilt, and you stand back maybe six foot, you, all you're going to see is just one continuous color. You're not really going to see the actual piecing. The only thing you may see a difference is, is in this square and this square. But other than that, these are going to look like they're the same uh, fabrics when you get back. So that's what I tried to accomplish with my block, is that, you know, I use similar you can barely tell that those are two different fabrics, but yet this still sticks out, but it's still all the same palette, all the same color, okay? Uh, Blue-green, they're all blue-greens. And then I went ahead and just used the blue-greens because I wanted somehow for this block to go in my quilt because it's the only, at so far, low contrast block we have. So in order to make it go with something else, I repeated it here in my spool block. So uh, that, was, that was the lesson that I got out of this, uh, this week's lesson that I wanted to talk about low contrast. You don't, a lot of people think for low contrast, it's whites against whites, but that, see, that's not true. We just proved that low contrast also can be darks against darks. Uh, but you still, when you get up close, you can still see the difference. But when you get far away, not far away, but, you know, viewing distance away. I always say an art quilt should be viewed from a distance, just like you would view a painting at a museum. Uh, you don't want to get your nose right up on and see every brush stroke because then you can't actually benefit by seeing the whole thing. Your nose is so close that you don't really get the concept of the whole design. 
So it's the same way in quilting. We, as quilt makers, always have our nose on what's right there in front of us. And so we are always very conscious of you know what the pattern looks like but you also have to consider what it's going to look like when it's on your bed and you're standing up and you're back away from it you want to have some contrast so that you can see all your work why go to all that work if you can't really see what you've done because it all mooshes together so that's the lesson for today but uh these blocks went super duper fast for me this um this king's crown actually was just four flying geese units and if you're making uh potato chip blocks boy you know how to make flying geese units because we've been making them this whole time i'm just going to put that square on one end now if you don't have this tape this magic tape you have to draw a line <clears throat> You have to draw a line from corner to corner. Then I'm just gonna eyeball that. Open that up. When you're making flying geese, you know, you always have to press the one side open before you can continue on, or you'll sew that first piece down and it'll never come up. So I'm gonna do the other side. We've done flying geese this way throughout the entire book, so this is nothing new. Put it right up there to your needle. If you have the magic tape, put it on your needle. Put the other uh, corner on your diagonal line. And that's the super duper way to make a flying geese units. And you know, you don't just have to make them this size. If you have a pattern that calls for flying geese, as long as you know what size it's supposed to be, this is the technique I like to use when I make a flying geese. There's several different ways. So I already made the other three just so you could see. So see how this, where's my other square, I wonder. Yeah, I don't know who that person is either. Where'd my other square go to? Is it hooked onto my sweater somewhere? That's what happens when I sew with a sweater is it gets hooked on. Is well, it under one of the others? I don't know. I don't see it. Well, I've lost a... I've lost a... Okay. Lost a unit. Yeah. So see how this makes the uh, potato chip block? All right. But what they did with this... Uh, King's crown block is they just turned the flying geese to go inward like that. Well, isn't that something? So that's, I mean, this is the same elements, but just flip those around. And a lot of the time, that's what block changes are. It's the same kind of elements, but you just flip them, flip the colors or the design around inside the block, and voila, you've got fun. So let's go ahead and sew uh, our rows together. I don't know what we did with that other. Maybe it's stuck on the bottom of somebody's shoe. <clears throat> Maybe. It was here a minute ago. I'm telling you, it's probably stuck to my sweater somewhere. Sometimes I get up from the sewing machine and I'm covered head to toe with threads. <clears throat> That's what I call my quilter's jewelry. A little bit of quilter's bling bling. Little bling bling for the quilter. Now I've got to press these open and I'll go ahead and continue on without my one corner square. Could be in a shoe, could be anywhere. It's not like I don't have more fabric at home, you know, to complete it with. So, I have to go home and make me another square. 
But now I, I will warn you, as soon as this video is over, we'll find it. That's just of course. The way, that's the way life goes. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Have you ever heard that saying? That's the way it's the, the, way the block cookie... tumbles. There you go. Yes, the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, I've heard have. that saying before. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sew my next piece on. To have my you had top any good row. cookies lately? I'm sugar free, Peter. Why do you keep bringing these sugar things up? Oh, have you been baking cookies? No. No. I bet Doug Lico has. That one makes good cookies. Okay. Um, <clears throat> no, no cookies. No cookies for Dawn. You know, Christmas is coming. No Christmas candy. It's going to be hard because my friend Tammy, she makes the best peanut butter fudge. It's her uh, grandma's recipe. She can still send it. I'll eat it. You would? Yeah, I'll You'd tell you save me it. from myself? I will. Oh, Peter, what a friend. I'm your huckleberry. There you go. You can be my huckleberry. Okay. We talked about huckleberries last week in my Emma club. Huckleberry is somebody you can really depend on. Because I was calling Chloe my huckleberry. She's my huckleberry. She's a sweet girl. She was full of herself this morning. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sew this on. Now, see, <laughs> it would have been real <laughs> tempting to sew it on that way because I'm used to those points doing that. But, nope, this is it. It goes like this. <laughs> so, let me go ahead and line up. But, see, I've got two points. So, I better put those points Back to back. Why I can't get it in the spot, I don't know. Okay. I'm going to push that all the way down, making sure that those points are together. And then I'm going to pin. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Find my point. I'm having to wear a brace on my arm at night. Mm -hmm. I have been doing so much cutting mm. that I have a pain right there. Oh. I have a little lump right there, too. Uh -huh. So I've been wearing a brace at night, hoping that'll help it. But That's a lot of cutting, Dawn. It's a lot of cutting, Were you Peter. cutting for like eight hours? Yeah, Straight, no, kinda? I was sewing in between a little bit. But oh. A lot of trimming, a lot of square... Excuse me, a lot of squaring up. Oh, making squares and a square and a so, square. So, since you mentioned it, um, and you are you have a an obsession with scissors yeah. and rotary cutters, do you happen to have that Martelli rotary cutter that's offset? It's supposed to make a difference uh, on the, yeah, on the wrist. Those. Yeah, I've seen those. I don't know if that would help or not. Yeah, I don't know either. I have never tried one. You know, they have them at Quilt Market all the time, and I, you know, I, I look at them, but I just never have tried I watched one. the YouTube demo Did from you? Martelli on it, and they they gave all these reasons why they developed it, why they came up with it, how it's supposed to relieve pressure on your wrist because um, the alignment of your wrist I because see. the blade's offset. Really? Mm-hmm. Have you actually tried one? Do we have one here? No, I haven't tried one. We don't have one here. We don't try. have them? Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I've never tried it. Maybe I ought to. But it, it's quilt market time, so you know Look we're for one we're at quilt market. well. No, I'm not going. Oh. But I mean, I, I that's why I'm so super. Uh, that's Busy. why I'm cutting so much because I'm doing you know getting things ready for quilt market. How many quilts are you working on? Uh, well, I'm down to my last one. Oh, so, very good. Which is good. Yeah. Okay, so now when I find my other piece over here, I'll put that on, and then that will be that king's crown. Now, there's just a little bit more contrast in this than there is. I think I achieved what she was trying to achieve in my Kim Deal fabrics. Mm-hmm. I just love but that But I, th I think I did pretty good with this fabrics, too. I think... They're both amazing. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of neat, aren't they? So then, let's go over to the spool uh, block. <laughs> I 
looking for that. We're going to be looking for that all day. Can the wind I, must have blew it off the desk. This called for a weird increment, so mm. uh, a seven eighths inch increment. So bump it up to the next full increment, okay? And there's two of them. There's a dark one and your background. And what it's going to be is this part of the spool. So whatever color you're making your spool, that's the color, and then the background color. Those two colors are going to be your half square triangles, and you need to make four. So I've already made a two, and I've already sewn on the diagonal because you've all seen me do it. And uh, so I'm just going to cut. I could have used my rotary cutter, had my scissors in my hand. I'll just go ahead and use those. Now, before I open those, you know what I'm going to do, my favorite thing. This is what I've been doing all week. Squaring oh up, squaring up, squaring up. Yeah. Been busy. Um, Keeping square you off the in a square in a square. It's going to be a pretty quilt, but a lot of work. A lot of work, a lot of fun. One of our viewers said we can call those, um, instead of dog ears, corn kernels. Corn kernels. Uh -huh. Oh, they kind of do look think like was, a little corn kernel. I think Gay Barrett is and the one And you know, that it's, that. it's Indiana. You know, we have more than corn in Indiana. That's our logo. Uh, anyway, and that we do grow a lot of corn. So cut my little corn kernels off. Little corn kernels. And you do cut the kernels off the cob, you know, so that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that K. Gay. Is it gay mm -hmm. or K? Gay, Barrett. Gay. Oh, yeah, gay. I like that, gay. That was a good, good thing. So our little corn ears. And then, uh, of course, you know, I'm going to have to press those open. Fingers aren't working very good today. Eh, it was cold this morning. Well, it was a little nippy. I wore a sweater. I've still got it on. I didn't, didn't bother taking it off. I froze in here last week. Lenine was hot. She had the door open. I was freezing. So it was the yin and the yang of the temperatures. You know, you get a bunch of women in a room, nobody can agree on the temperature, that's for sure. Okay. Now, so I'm going to uh, have all my components ready to go, and I'm going to bring over my uh, threads. Oh, I thought, oh, those I thought this was fun, fun because it sort of looked like variegated thread. It does. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, this is going to be a true test of your quarter inch because when you sew all four of those together, it has to come out to be that size right there. So we'll see how good Dawn's quarter inch is today. And if it's not, just cut it down. No! If it's not, you find out why and you fix it. Where has he been? Has he not been listening to these lessons? No, I was uh, talking about the lesson where it didn't come out, so he cut it down and all the points fell off. Oh, yeah, that was last week's. That was last week's. I've got to fix that block. I got it on my sewing table to fix. I'll get her done. Because I'm loving this quilt. I'm loving everything about this project. Okay, I'm going to open these seams. That looks like a pretty good quarter inch. And if your quarter inch is good, but your pressing is not good, well, that could be the issue. If you open that up and there's a little gap, which there isn't in mine, but if you had a little gap in there, a fold over, then that'd be a problem. That's not going to let your quarter inch, I mean your fabric, all come out to the correct size. So I've been noticing since I've pressed open Dawn, yeah. any of my issues of them being off just a little bit, having a little bit of overhang in yeah. one direction or another, most of that's kind of eliminated, except for with bias pieces. Just yeah. because pressing open, I've noticed it gets some, um, you don't have to sew this scant quarter inch anymore. Right. I've noticed that. Right. Okay. One more seam. We'll see how we did. A 
Look at that. Pretty darn close. Is it on the money? Good for government work. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put my block together, and I'm gonna put it together over here. Now, the most probably the most difficult part of this block is getting these Yikes. angles together. Yikes! These angles on these uh, half square triangles, because you want them to flare out and flare on the bottom. So you've got to really pay attention to which way that diagonal goes. You see that? See how I'm looking here, making sure that my diagonal is correct on that? So I'm going to sew those on lickety-split. Yeah, this just becomes now a row, just like the other one. Three rows, kind of a nine patch. I'm going to sew those together. Now what you can do if you don't want to sew with all those uh, all those seams on the bottom, because if I did, I'd have to pin them. Do you see that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it this way so I can watch them. I could pin them, but I'm not going to. I'm going to see how good I can do without pinning just by holding them down. Usually this is where you like to have your stiletto handy. This is on. usually when I like to have my stiletto, and it's right here if I should need it. But look at that. I whizzed right through that. So The confidence, I tell you. I, I think it, you know what I think it has to do with? What? Is pressing those seams open uh. and making them really flat with the clapper. You know, that wool heats it from the bottom and the top, so it really does flatten those seams out like, like they should be. Press these open. Let's see. So, Peter, when do you think is the longest you've ever sat and sewn? Continuously. Oh, like when two I first, hours, three hours. When I first started quilting, I would sew. I could sew all day without like, even getting up to go to the bathroom or take I a mean, drink of water. Or... I didn't have. I didn't have drinks uh -huh. when I started quilting. I didn't know that was a thing to have your drink next to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious, Ton. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be so into that project, I would just sew all day. Really? Yeah. Wow. Sew all day. And then, you know, get lightheaded because I didn't eat. Yeah. But um, nowadays, I have it timed to where I could probably sit down and sew for about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh-huh. At a setting. Mm-hmm. Okay, now see what I've done? I've laid those back out so that no mistake on these angles. All right? That's so important. Because I, I can't tell you how many times I've sewed it on wrong and then wished I had laid it out before I sewed it so that I could uh, visually see it. I'm a very visual person. And so laying it out so I can see it visually really makes a big difference to me. And those angles, you know, when you get them off, well, they don't look like a spool. I don't know what they look like. Probably a bird because she's so into birds. See how that flipped up? Now I have to stop. Get out my stiletto. And why couldn't I just use my finger? Well, I could, but it makes some people nervous to have your finger that close to the needle. So I'm going to just go ahead and use my stiletto here. See how I can get right up in there? And I couldn't get my finger up in there. So I'm going to use my stiletto to just help feed that through. One more. And then, once I get this um, row done, the rows will be ready to sew together. So I'm going to real quick here open these seams. I 
I hope if you were having any issues with the opening of the scenes that we went over those and that uh, those have been resolved for you guys. And I was thinking this week, it's been a while since I've really thanked you guys for tuning into my station. Those of you who leave such wonderful comments just really touch my heart. And I'm so thankful that all of you guys are uh, participating in this so along. It's been mega fun for me having somebody to stitch along with. So I appreciate you being here. Okay, now I'm ready to sew the three rows together. I just, I don't have points to match up. I just have seams to match up. And that should just fit right in. And sew that in. I'm not going to go over my pen. That's not good for the machine. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew this one on before I press. I've always been that back so I can see that the seam is correct and lined up. I don't know how many more tricks are up my sleeve to show you guys. I think you pretty much know how to sew by now. I've given you all my uh, hints. We haven't talked about setting seams. We ought to do that sometime. Okay, now here's the big reveal. Couldn't have a big reveal on our other one because we lost that piece. <laughs> I don't know where it's, it's maybe, like maybe the it fell, socks. Maybe it fell down the inside of my boot. It's like the socks you put in the wash machine by the time they get to the dryer and everything's wonderful hunky dory. Then you open the door and one of them like zooms out and you have no idea where it went. So Dawn, you know what? I got, I got a secret. What? When I buy socks, yeah. I find a pair I like. I like uh -huh. darn tough. Uh -huh. They're all wool. Yeah. I like wool, nylon, blend, whatever. Um, they're my favorite. I get the ones with extra cushion, but when I buy them, mm -hmm. I buy them in pa um, three pairs. Oh. I'll buy three separate pairs. So you have three chances of matching yep. them up. Yeah. Oh, that's a good plan. So if you, whatever your favorite sock is, if you just buy a bunch of that one sock, yeah. then also it's less time you spend matching because they all match. Well, they all match. Okay. I just kind of was putting that, my clapper down on that to let it. Let me, uh... Let me get rid of some of these tails. Thread. Some scragglers. Thread scragglers. That is colorful center. I love it. Isn't that pretty? It looks like you're ready to sew a fall project because it's got the fall colors. Okay, that's good. Now see, this one would have been good if we would have had the other. But isn't that funny how that's that same components as the potato chip block? It is. I just need to press it a little better. Okay, and then here's Cappy's. Well, let's put them up here because there's more room. Okay. So there they are. 53 and 54. The spool block and the king's crossing. We did it. Man, we have made 54 blocks together. That's amazing. That is amazing. We got what, 20 some to go? Uh, less than 20 to go. That's so, amazing. I'm so excited. Yay, Rock. Get busy. Get your blocks done. See you next week. Bye. Okay, we're back. Guess what? We found the block. It was underneath the mat here. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this because I can't hardly stand it leaving it unfinished. Oh my goodness. I told you, the minute we'd stop filming, we'd find it. Well, and we, Peter, we says, have, we Peter says, now, where's that block? Where's that block? And uh, so 
we lifted up that little cushion and there it was. Now how it got under there, who knows? That's just crazy. Crazy, I tell crazy, ya. Crazy, I tell ya. The world is a mad, mad world. Didn't there used to be a magazine? I don't know really anything about it except for this guy with goofy ears on the cover of a magazine that had mad across it. I don't know what it even was about. It was, I, you, it I, was a... Okay, so <laughs> I when that was out, I read a copy or two of that, and that was, yeah. a, that was a fun magazine. Was it? I couldn't tell you what it was about because I don't remember. I don't remember either. I don't know why I wasn't allowed to read it. Maybe it was a little bit... I don't know, political or raunchy or something. I don't know. But my mom didn't allow me to read it. <laughs> but you'd see it, you know, on the stands by the grocery store. Yeah, my mom didn't know I had it. Oh, she didn't. Okay, well, there you go. Okay, is your mom still alive? Uh-uh. Oh, no? Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Let's, let's get this block done. Can you believe that? I told you. You know what happens is if I hadn't have found it, if well, Peter found it actually, if Peter hadn't have found it, I would have cut a new one. And as soon as I cut the new one, that's when we would have found it. Because that's just the way the cookie crumbled, the quilt goes. That's the way the pieces fall. But now we can complete our block. <laughs> My goodness. <coughs> Excuse me. That was uh, that was pretty funny. I said, "Get that camera back on. We're going to show them this block because we knew as soon as we turned that film off, that camera off, that we would be finding it, and we did. And now we have a block we can show. Poof. King's crown done. Yay! And it looks really nice, doesn't it?" I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Good points. I love this fabric right here. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So it kind of looks like little jewels or something in a yeah. crown. Yeah. It anyway. does, doesn't it? Yeah. Sapphires. Okay, comics. boy. That was a close call. I almost had to recut that one and a half inch. Square. We were going to tear this we were gonna, studio up. Yeah. It, the studio was going to get clean. Okay. Thanks for coming back and joining us. See you later. Bye.